this week on Hermitcraft. I get to listen to Zloy rant about the difference between a Matryoshka doll and a Babushka doll for 40 minutes. Thanks, Cub and Scar. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, where we teach kids to use proper Russian words for proper Russian dolls. Does this mean we're an educational channel now? Do we get an Angela Merkel cameo? <laughs> My name is Pixel Riffs, and our writer is Zloy XP. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. A rather prank-heavy week, wouldn't you say? You got a dinosaur right here, and then you've got the sheep to feed him. Seriously? I know this is probably... <gasps> A Brontosaurus? A Pterodactyl? Is there a T-Rex? Vintage Beef, now defossilized after a short vacation, finally reacts to the convex Jurassic prank and nerds out so much that he can't find the strength to remove it. Are you kidding me? This is... <laughs> this is amazing! It turns out Wells wasn't too off with his retirement home prank way back when, and the NHO jungle is now officially the land of the dinosaurs. You can sight see the old stuff when you tour the boat ride. It has arrows now, so only half the children will get lost on it. This is why B-Dubs doesn't allow his villagers out of the snow globe, but they might find trouble anyway, or trouble might find them in the form of an anonymous revolution operative who spams banners all over the greenhouse while B-Dubs is recharging his tools. Rather than get angry, B-Dubs lets off some steam by TNTing one of his creative builds as inspiration for a ruins project elsewhere in the jungle, or for someone's base. I will say, I will say this though, Ooh. I will say this, they formed this wool around the leaves that I put down, and I made a very nice organic shape, didn't I? Like if you do a roof like that, that looks really good. Wow, those two really fit together. We should start some kind of segment for them or something. I, I play Hermit Jungle every day. Despite having some asthma problems, Zombie Cleo also returns to the Hermitcraft series to continue the work on the inner sanctum of her temple. With some terracotta and a bunch of sandstone, she whips out a spiffy wall design that stares back at you if you look at it the right way. And that concludes our Cleo coverage. We'd expand on this joke, but we're already walking on thin glass here. Go up and see what Carol can see because that's the important part what Carol that I like. Wells Knight has a different view on religion and apparently it includes flattening out a ginormous piece of land and giving the viewers a lesson or two in cathedral building. And then I'm mirroring the same thing over on the other side. So we've got uh, basically uh, changing this up to match. Now I actually did it incorrectly the first time, but hey, that's okay, it's fine. That's one great monument to the faith. You can fit so many hunchbacks in that. Besides that, Wells and XB give each other an updated tour of their bases. Also, what hot swap collab? There wasn't any hot swap collab. Well, there was. Not just Wells and XB, mind you, it was also False and Cub Fan, but their score was ultimately just as embarrassing. That's three points, one single golden ore. <laughs> one oh, single gold ore. And then oh, we've got gosh, 11 of these. Oh, wow, know. she went mumbo. Eight, jeez. Wait, 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 really? But at least great times were had, and that's all that matters, as long as you don't publish it on the internet, which they did. Watch it, it's funny. You still can't say Foz hasn't had a productive week, as her mushroom factory is now structurally complete and even has a working elevator in it. So in case you want a place to move mushrooms up and down, you know where to go. And Cubfan, let's say, had a fun week too. What Guardian prank? There was no Guardian prank. A little known fact is that Light travels slower in Rendog's videos, which is why we're only now getting to see his side of Stress's visit, which we reported on last week. Which brings him to fly by Fred and once again appreciate the things she's done for the minigame. Just look at that pristine, high quality shrubbery. Ah, that's some good stuff. Perfect. I think it matches um, our style of the Elven Fortress so very well. I absolutely love it. And as the Orcish hordes will be approaching, they're going to have lots of cover to take behind. Here, right? This might be because Ren himself is mostly working underground these days, connecting the storage modules of uranium together with subterranean tunnels. Such kindness to her work can't go unpunished, and Stress brings Ren a sheep named Victoria as a gift offering. The barn animals are a bit of a stress thing this week. She's finished the horse stables, a proper pen for the cowsies and piggies, then kidnapped and entrapped several people and forced them into breeding. It's fun seeing her go a tiny bit more technical too when she has to figure out a deep storage system for the spawner loot. Needless to say, it turns into a bit of a derp storage along the way. I can't do anything today, everyone! I can't do it! The brain! The brain, the hand-eye coordination, everything is going down the drain today. Okay, that's better. 
which I guess would require some derp redstoner help, and it just so happens that ZF has finished his pumpkin kissing farm, so he is available for service. It's just that I wouldn't advise meeting him face to face until he deals with the uh, condition. Is there something on my face? What? What is it? Get it off! Oh, oh it feels weird! Ugh. Despite all that, Zed does add some automated ingredients to his juice bar. All those health potions will come in handy if he happens to visit Joe Hills' D&D castle. Not least, because Joe keeps losing hearts from falling off the walls. And Joe is adding more health hazards but more architectural interest this week by developing the upper floors of the castle and adding a basement. Because this is not a uh, part of the castle that the vampire is necessarily trying to um, impress people with. Like, he doesn't say like, Oh, hey, you want to see what a powerful vampire I am? Let's go down the service stairs to where I keep, you know, a few hundred barrels of wine. TFC drops a bombshell on us this week by revealing his fort is actually an airport. Hands up if you saw that coming. Anyway, it gets a pretty spiffy runway complete with flashing lights, and the tallest tower is actually converted into an airport control tower. But at least I am getting some progress made on this thing. In spite of uh, basic internet difficulties of all forms and shapes and sizes and whatnot. He isn't the only one learning to fly, as XB Crafted tries to set up an elytra launcher outside of the Woodland Mansion. So far it just propels him into the fountain, but it's a start. He's not the only one dipping his toes though, as a remodel of the skeleton farm leads to his pet dogs taking a dive. At least no animals were harmed in the making of this farm, plus after 15 years we finally know who let the dogs out. <laughs> Sit. Not to be outdone by our music references, XB starts to reenact the Billie Jean video in his basement. Funnily enough, Azuma stumbles upon the same lighting bug over at his base. Having gotten lots of brainstorming help from his plot world and about to get even more, X continues slowly encasing his base in an artificial mountain, finally getting an entrance to it so you don't have to carpet bomb yourself into the place from Elytra. Plus, his parrot farm now works as intended, as in, it spawns parrots. The additions to the layout include a map room, a minecart elevator he overthinks a little bit too much, and a room for all the mob heads that he decides to store in questionable ways. To achieve this greatness, X hires one half of the Entity Moving Brigade that happens to have a villager breeder and a squid face sitting in the middle of his base. This room over here is going to be my mob head room, so it's right next door, and so if you look in here, I've already got a lot of unique mob heads more lying around. I'm going to need like... Okay probably like 50 odd because I, I kind of want to get Ooh. every head in the game. And Impulse does deliver on it, quite professionally, activator rails and all. The testificates only get the jump on him once, but even that's not much of a revenge. Mobhead Itis seems to spread to Tango's traders too, as his row of chosen ones seem to grow additional faces. Perhaps it's the consequence of breathing in too many tectoplasm fumes. Speaking of which, there's plenty more now rising from the cracks of artificial nether terrain Tango started building under his supervillain fortress. Listen, buddy, all right, I'm personally not interested in your offer, but I know someone who is. His name is Happy, uh, last name Fun Sauce. Yeah, he's, he's right down there. You'll make him. Oh, there, there he is, there he is. The seismic activity might be caused by the offset of diorite balance in the core of the server, since Iskal85 has decided to drop stacks upon stacks of it into his own tectoplasm volcano. Iskal even sets up a counter to keep track of how much dragon fruit filling is dissolved in the green. A terrible environmental crime, but hey. Bumbo seems to like it. Here's what I've done. You know how you have you have the you have the derp counter, yeah. the spoon counter, and Azuma has the derp counter. Yeah. I have the diorite burnt counter. <laughs> that's epic. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> And that's not even the only terrible crime Mumbo is tied up in this week. Carvan Scar's infamous convex group strikes again, and soon enough Mumbo's ocean monument gets treated to an Elder Guardian. Inside of an Elder Guardian. Inside of an Elder Guardian. Inside of- you get the point. One, and then the, the real Guardian uh, dude inside that one. And so, it's quite an adventure to get him out. Classic yeah, Vex yeah. prank. The Guardianception is especially frustrating because Mumbo, ever the spoon, never figures out to drink milk for his bones or use that TNT slime trick Azuma showed him to get rid of the spiky fish. Mischief has definitely been successful, for the convex once more come out on top and loose. They might get in the beef with the Russian Mafia though if they misspell or mispronounce more Russian. That is a spect- that's the size of my base! <laughs> that must have taken hours! So all I have to do is kind of cycle around this block. I'm sorry for combat logging. Yeah, I, I know I'm going to get blasted for that down in the comment section. 
But sometimes a noob has just got to be a noob, and I, I am a total noob. Mumbo has a different idea on what should float in the middle of his base. Particularly, he chooses a rhombus-shaped mob farm originally designed by Il Mango, but slightly modified to fit the center point better. After many creepers to the face, the design ends up working and producing tons of delicious mob bits. I mean, of course it's delicious if you sprinkle all that sugarcane on it. And that's pretty much it for this week's recap. Our writer is LoyXP, and my name is PixelRiffs. I tried out the Hot Swap Challenge myself this week, and I think we scored pretty well. You can check that video out in the end cards, but don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, subscribe so you won't miss future episodes of the recap, and share this video with the Hermitcraft fans in your life. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.